following two years of extensive touring in support of their debut self-titled album, System of a Down was gearing up to release their highly anticipated follow-up. The band was coming off the success of their first two singles, Sugar and Spiders, which achieved significant airplay on rock radio and also was in regular rotation on MTV. During that time, the band would achieve touring opportunities with bands like Slayer and Metallica. The band would also gain significant notoriety after being prominently featured in a November 1998 episode of then Red Hot South Park. And with the band quickly achieving a high level of success, the expectations for their second album would be even higher. The record was due to be released on September 3rd, 2001. Today we're going to look back at System of a Down's biggest hit to date, Chop Suey. The song became a monumental hit for the band that transcended their own success. It has one of the most recognizable intros of any song ever. So sit back and relax and let's take a look at one of rock music's most successful singles. Before we begin, consider taking a brief moment and subscribing with notifications on for more deep dives just like this video and breaking news and updates on your favorite bands. While there were those of us who loved them fanatically, people hated them. Yeah. You know, people hated them. I can remember K-Rock and Kevin Weatherly's the uh, program director of K-Rock. And I remember him saying, System of a Down is a band we will never play on our station ever. 100%. I don't care what happened. They're not... That doesn't fit on our station. And then a year later, it was the number one band on the station. Rick Rubin, much like System of a Down was at the time, is a very polarizing figure in rock music history, though his imprint on System of a Down's album Toxicity is undeniable. Rubin served as producer of the record, alongside guitarist Darren Malakian and vocalist Serge Tonkian, who are also credited. The album, which includes Chop Suey and some of System of a Down's other biggest hits, was recorded at Cello Studios in Hollywood, California. Cello Studios, as it was known at the time, saw artists like Blink-182, Rage Against the Machine, Tool, Weezer, Muse, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Audio Slave, and so many more record in the facility. This is where everything happens right here. The magic happens in here. Boy. That's John. That's my little monkey. <laughs> you want to see my monkey dance? That's my monkey. You can't see the monkey, but he's showing you his buttocks right now. Those are the monkey's buttocks. Hey, what's going on over here? You want to see the drum set? The drum tracks were done. This area right here, very special. Deep, penetrating, pain-relieving rub. But it does feel good when, you're, when you've been playing for six hours. Believe me. The members of System of a Down would write many of the songs for Toxicity while they were on tour in support of their self-titled album. In fact, their biggest song ever, Chop Suey, was actually written in the back of an RV while they were on tour. Guitarist Darren Malakian said in an interview, quote, I was just hanging out by myself on a bed at the back. There was an acoustic guitar I used to take around with me. I just started playing that acoustic guitar, and that's when I started writing Chop Suey. Malakian would also work with the album's co-producer Rick Rubin on the song. He said, quote, I co-produced Toxicity with Rick. That was my first taste of actually being involved in the band as a producer, and not just writing the songs. I learned a lot from Rick. Not necessarily technical things. Rick's not a very technical guy in the studio. He's more like an opinion, and he's a tough opinion. If he loves something, he'll love it. But if something's not great, he'll let you know. There's a lot of lore surrounding the original name for the song, which was reportedly called Suicide before their record label forced them to change the name to Chop Suey. But guitarist Darren Malakian said that wasn't true in an interview. Nobody pressured us, he said. We were like, it's our first single from the album. Do we want to give the radio a reason not to play it? He had the title ready. Darren pointed out that it features the word suicide cut in half. He said, it was something they used to say. We'll make Chop Suey out of him, referring to the old gangster movies he used to watch. We're going to kill him. It tied in with the whole death thing. In the many years that have since followed the release of Toxicity, Many fans have wondered what the lyrics in Chop Suey actually mean. Fortunately, the band has given an answer on record. Darren says the lyrics that opened the song were totally different when they first wrote it. It went something like, Tell me, tell me what you think about tomorrow. Is there going to be a pain and sorrow? Tell me what you think about the people. Is there going to be another sequel? System vocalist Serge Tonkey and later would come up with the signature intro to the track. We've been in the studio for about six years. 
We're on the seventh year that? now. I think in like a week it'll be seven years to date. <laughs> System of a Down's album Toxicity was released mere days before the 9-11 attacks. This reportedly led to the song being largely ignored by rock radio due to sensitivity issues related to the themes expressed in the music. Serge Tonkian reflected on that time during a recent interview with Apple Music's Zane Lowe. He said, Chop Suey was released a week or two before September 11, 2001. And on September 11th, when the whole plane's crashing into the World Trade Center, that catastrophe happened, our album was number one. And it felt like the whole world was exploding. And they took our song off the radio, Chop Suey, because it had the word suicide in it, self-righteous suicide. Everyone was calling us going, how did you guys know and all this stuff? And we're all weirded out, trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Meanwhile, we go on tour because we were booked on this tour on Toxicity, the record, with Chop Suey as the single. And every day I remember those different threat levels, orange and red. The news basically saying the danger signals, and there might be terrorist attacks everywhere. It was a daunting time. So when I think of Chop Suey, I can't think of how we actually sat in the studio and worked on it. I'm thinking of 9-11, going on tour, thinking we might die any night. Bassist Shavo Odajian added, The Pledge of Allegiance Tour. That was the name of the tour we were about to go on. So it seemed kind of contrived, the whole thing we did. So I woke up in the morning with my phone blowing up. It was those last couple of days at home. I was trying to really get, knowing I'm going on tour in a couple of days. I answered the phone and it was my mom. And my mom said, turn the TV on. There's chaos happening in America. I turned the TV on. It was like 9.15 and I saw the tower fall. My phone beeped and I went to the other line and it was my manager. And he goes, congratulations, you're number one on Billboard. In the same thought process of what's happening in New York, I'm in LA. And then, oh, whoa, we just went number one. And remember, it was our second record. We weren't famous yet. We had a record. We toured and came back home and wrote this other record and we released it. This was gonna be our first tour in front of our second sophomore record. Until today, when people ask me, it's bittersweet about having had a number one album on 9-11. It was such a weird time. When do you guys expect the album to come out? Uh, hopefully in like seven years. June of last year. We're never done with the album. With the, the album, album is done with us. Just tell me kind of what people can expect, you know, with this album. Is that unexpectable? I think we really outdid ourselves this time. <laughs> The song would also attract its fair share of 9-11 conspiracy theorists. In an interview, Darren Malakian said, Our fans were starting to say, Hey, these guys are prophets. They're saying things that hadn't happened yet. Self-righteous suicide. Aerials in the sky. Jet pilot. I was like, wow, cool they think that. Let's make them believe we actually did it. In the years that followed, Chop Suey not only became System of a Down's biggest song, it became the most streamed heavy metal song of all time. It currently sits with more than a billion views alone on YouTube, not to mention hundreds of millions, if not billions of streams on the collective streaming services. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe to Rockfeed with notifications on for more deep dives just like this one and breaking news and updates about your favorite musicians.